Read about Annie Pavelic working for the Archbishop there in, in uh, Croatia. Stepning, Archbishop Stepning. You read about those wicked sinners. They put Serb after Serb after Serb to death who was an Orthodox Christian and was not a Roman Catholic. And about one-third of them, they said you can convert to Roman Catholicism. They brutally murdered and killed. And you need to read the work of Avril Manhattan if you don't believe it. And that's only in the 1940s. That's what, 60, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. As though, as though the Dark Ages was raging. And so the Pope believes he has universal spiritual power to tell you what to do, what to believe about God. And as expressed in that damnable, diabolical, duplicious, <laughs> demon-possessed Council of Trent, the Council of Trent, overseen by Jesuits, especially Diego Lainez, from 1545 to 1563, condemned every biblical doctrine championed by the Reformers, specifically justification by grace through faith, grace alone through faith alone. Only the Scriptures. The Jesuits condemn the doctrine of only the Scriptures, namely that you have the Scriptures, quote-unquote, but the traditions of the Fathers. And they didn't have the Scriptures because they said Scripture was Jerome's Latin Vulgate. It's not the Scriptures. The Scripture, the Byzantine Greek text, is translated for us into the A.V. 1611 Reformation Bible. And the Ben Chaim Hebrew text is given to us again by the Reformation English Bible done by those learned and godly men. So, the scriptures of the Council of Trent are not my scriptures. They're not God's scriptures. And yet they have the audacity to say the scriptures, the scriptures, they, they with tongue-in-cheek mean Jerome's Latin Vulgate. That piece of trash. And Jerome's Latin Vulgate is the foundation for all these new Greek texts, starting with Westcott and Hort, all those other pieces of trash. So they can trash the Reformation, so that the Reformed churches will will adopt those papal pro Jerome Latin Vulgate Greek texts to underline their undermine to underlie their new English Bibles, so they can bring all the Protestant churches and the Baptist churches into reunion with that sinner, that great Antichrist, the Pope of Rome. Why? Because the Pope claims universal spiritual power. Every time you see a new international version, American perversion, or all those perversions, you want to think of one thing, the gold key of the Pope of Rome, storing his spiritual power, the white province of the infidelity. All you Protestants, you need to be subject to this. What he believes, he says, salvation outside the Catholic. All you Muslims, according to the Pope, you need to be subject to him. You think he's tolerant of Islam? Why do you think he's incited a crusade against the Shia right now and any Sunni who gets in the way? Why do you think he incited this crusade starting on the October 7th? October 7th, man. 2000, what, 2001. Uh, you have 9 11, September 11th, and you got October 7th, the day of the Battle of the Ponto, when the Knights of Malta and the Papal. Uh, Navy defeated the Muslim uh, Navy, and I believe it was Suleiman the Magnificent. That's a great day for Rome, October 7th. They love that day. And so they started this crusade against you Muslim nations on October 7th, 2001. When are you Muslims going to wake up and realize that it's the Pope of Rome that's your enemy? It's not us Protestants and Baptists. We had a working relationship with you during the Reformation when you were banging at the gates of Vienna ready to set back the Pope of Rome. And, you know, we were praying that you succeeded because those Roman Catholic priests killed many, many millions more of us than any of you Muslims ever did. Not that I'm a friend of Islam. The Pope believes all you Muslims need to be subject to him. And you know what? He's going to submit you, and he's going to submit you with the military might of Europe and America, united together. He's going to submit you. 
Saudis are working for him, all the all the Arab noble family, quote unquote, not noble about any of them, but they're working all for the Pope of Rome. They're not under any concern, but all you low level Muslims, the Pope's got a plan for your life. And he's coming after you. And what breaks my heart is he's going to use the American military to do it. We ought to be defending our own borders. But what do you expect when you're under military government? Controlled by the Pope since March 9, 1933. Proclamation 2040. The second thing about the Pope is he believes that he has universal temporal power. Since he has universal spiritual power, that you must believe uh, the doctrines of the Pope of Rome, and that you must uh, participate of the seven sacraments, and you must do this and this and this, and, this, and it never ends. It never ends. Ignatius Loyola had so much contempt for the seven sacraments, he didn't even, he was, didn't even have last rites. He thought it was a joke. And it is. They are. The Pope believes all you Jewish leaders, of course you Jewish leaders in Israel know this, but all you Jewish uh, leaders in America, the Pope believes that you need to submit to him, boy. Do what he tells you to do. Or else he uses Federal Reserve Bank and all of his monetary monopolies to break you. That's right. And his big commercial banks that all can handle the private trust accounts of all the enemies and belligerents under the Trading with the Enemy Act. That's right. So they can invest and reinvest and reinvest, making money for the military government. That's why these banks are too big to fail, because they're holding the private trust account of every public U.S. citizen deemed an enemy and a belligerent under the Trading with the Enemy Act. And they're making giga quadrillions to then be able to finance their deep, dark, black projects, their underground uh, bases and their, uh, their underground boring machines. So they can travel Mach 2 underground at 2,000 feet below sea level so that they can uh, tra connect everything. All of this is being financed by the by the sheeple, the American sheeple in this country, who can't even understand when they go through an airport and they see a flag trimmed with gold fringe, then you know what? What are we doing under some kind of military jurisdiction here? They don't even want to see it. The average American white man doesn't want to see when he goes into court. He's got a military color there, and he doesn't even want to ask, what are we doing with a military flag in this courtroom, Judge? We can't ask that. Takes his children to public school, goes down to the auditorium, and there he sees in the auditorium a flag, an American flag trimmed in gold fringe, and a state flag trimmed in gold fringe. Doesn't want to ask the principal, how can we have gold fringe flags? Are we under some sort of military jurisdiction in these public schools? Huh? Same way with the hotels. When are we going to wake up? Because you see, the Pope has already imposed his universal spiritual power through the National Council and the World Council of Churches and through his high-level Freemasonry, of which these pastors are members of high-level Freemasonry, and through their doctrines and their deeds, they have practically reduced all Protestant and Baptist churches to the temporal power and spiritual power of the Pope. Is that what you want? You want to be on the spiritual power of the Pope? Well, because you've submitted to it, you know what? God has put us under this temporal power. And he did it to us Americans on March 9th, 1933, shortly after the horrible, terrible apostasy of the modern move, modernistic movement, when Princeton and all the other historic seminaries and Christian universities went apostate, and apparently God just said, well, you know, if you want to go apostate, and you want to depart from the Reformation Bible, and you want to embrace the Mercersburg movement, and you want to embrace all these perversions, and Westcott and Hort, and Eberhard Nessel, and Kurt Land, and all those other Greek heretics, then if you want to embrace the these papal servants and embrace the Pope's spiritual power with well, I'm going to give you over to his temple power. And so that's what he did. March 9, 1933, FDR issued his final proclamation, 2040. Congress had approved it, Emergency Banking Relief Act, amending Section 5B of the Trading with the Enemy Act, and made the Trading with the Enemy Act applicable to every public citizen, every person under the Emergency Banking Relief Act, and hence we're now from sea to sea, from sea to shining sea, under the Trading with the Enemy Act, and the Constitution has been set aside. 
The Jesuits did this in England when they brought the Admiralty inland in the 1600s, which resulted in the Puritan Revolution. They've done the same thing here, but they didn't bring Admiralty inland, but they brought a type of law that's the same, and that's the Trading with the Enemy Act with military jurisdiction. We're under the Pope's temporal power. And that's why we are being broken to shivers. That's why the middle class is being destroyed. That's why the white Protestants and Baptists are low man on totem pole in government activity because we have departed from the Lord and we want nothing to do with his book, his Reformation Bible, and we want nothing to do with his righteousness. We think we can just continue to have sinful and ungodly habits and really believe God's going to intervene for us. It's not happening. Now that we're under the spiritual power of the Pope, his golden key, and the temporal power of the Pope, his silver key. And if you want to have a real illustration of this, just go over to Fort Meade, Maryland, enter NSA headquarters, and look at the symbol of the NSA. It's an eagle clutching a silver key, which in the words of NSA itself tells you the silver key represents Peter's power of binding and loosing. That's right, the NSA upholds the temporal power of the Pope of Rome. And we deserve it. We'll be back after prayer and reflection. This is 24-7 World Radio. This is Fernando Castaneda, host of Christianity Today on 24-7 World Radio. Each Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I present the spiritual condition of the church today, comparing how the church should be according to the AB 1611 Reformation Bible. And ladies... Join my wife, Kendra, during the second half of each show for teaching specifically for you pursuant to Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. So join us for Christianity Today every Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on 247worldradio.com. This is Richard Began, host of the Gospel in French broadcast on 24-7 World Radio. Ici Richard Bégin, votre animateur pour l'émission Évangile en français sur les ondes de 24 sur 7 World Radio. I teach the French-speaking people of the world the gospel of Jesus Christ and I defend the French Calvinists against the Jesuits. J'enseignerai aux francophones du monde l'évangile de Jésus-Christ et la défense des calvinistes français contre les Jésuites. Join me for an entire French broadcast every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 247worldradio.com Soyez avec nous pour cette émission entièrement francophone à tous les mercredis à 2h p.m. Heure de l'Est, ici même sur 24 sur 7 worldradio.com This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 247worldradio.com I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish-speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the counter-reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 247worldradio.com. Tu Dat Jacek zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradio.com. Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformacji w Polsce, polskich protestantów i baptystów oraz polskiej Biblii reformacyjnej. Demaskuję również kontreformację w mojej ojczyźnie kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymskokatolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. 